The problem that we have today is that we are totally engulfed in a toxic cancel culture. One person makes one mistake and we totally eliminate them from any type of public life, service life, religious life, entertainment life. But do we forget that we also commit mistakes? Do we forget that what if Allah chose to expose us? What would happen to us? I'm Chaplain Adil Zay. Welcome to our series, Heart Works. Today's topic is about cancel culture. When the Prophet Sallallahu was going through a very tough time, this is around the time of the year of sorrow or year of sadness, Prophet Sallallahu was losing his wife Khadija, losing his uncle Abu Talib, very, very difficult time for him. And he goes to a place called Ta'if. And Ta'if is, was a city uh, that was not very hospitable to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, say the least. They rejected the message of Islam Prophet went with Zayd, who was his formerly adopted son. And then the elders sent the youth to basically stone the Prophet to the point that he had blood coming out of his feet. So the Prophet was very distraught, obviously very, I'm sure, very embarrassed. Allah knows best, but you can imagine if you're in his shoes, how would you feel as a messenger of God going out to a different city, coming back? And so what happens is that there is an orchard owner who notices the Prophet ﷺ is injured. So they sent their servant out who brings them some grapes and mends for the wounds of the Prophet ﷺ. And at this point, the person starts to learn about Islam because the Prophet ﷺ, before he eats the grapes, what does he say? He says, Bismillah. He mentions Allah's name. And he takes it and then he says, like, what is that? And then so then he becomes Muslim, right? And he tells other members uh, about Islam from his community. An uh, even fa more fascinating point is that when Prophet Sallallahu passed away, there were four different groups that people broke out into. And of those groups that remained was the group that stayed Muslim. And in this specific group were people from Mecca, Medina, and Ta'if. What was beautiful about people of Ta'if was that they said that we were of the last people to embrace Islam. We don't wanna be of the first people to leave Islam, right? And this is the kicker. The angel Jibreel came down and he told the Prophet Sallallahu after he had been stoned, after he had been humiliated, he told him, do you want me to take these two mountains and crush these people? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, no, because from among them, there may be people who believe. And now the entire region is Muslim. And as I mentioned before, even when people were trying to leave Islam in different groups, they held fast and stayed inside the religion. Prophet Sallallahu had the chance. He could have totally canceled them, made dua, and had Allah's punishment come upon them. He had that chance right there. But what did he choose to do? He chose Rahmah. He chose the end game. He chose the notion that people can and will change. Umar bin al-Khattab was one of the most oppressive forces against the Muslims, and then he became one of the greatest Muslims. You never know who is going to change in our society, who is going to become that person who is going to be a wonderful person. The problem that we have today is that we are totally engulfed in a toxic cancel culture. One person makes one mistake and we totally eliminate them from any type of public life, service life, religious life, entertainment life. But do we forget that we also commit mistakes? Do we forget that what if Allah chose to expose us what would happen to us? From a personal perspective, perhaps you have had romantic interest with someone and it didn't work out. And then your best friend dates that same person, right? Do you cancel out the entire friendship that you two had, all of the wonderful memories and, and moments you had together for this one person that you weren't even married to, you were just kind of like talking to, right? These type of experiences happen all the time with young Muslim men and young Muslim women. And I'm sure they happen in different ways. I'm just giving you one example. But the way forward is to think about, instead of having a cancel culture, can we be a community that focuses on a potential culture? What is the potential of this person in the future? And what am I missing? right now that I'm not seeing about what they could be or what they were and what they could be again. If you found value in this video, hit that like button. And if you want more, check out our HeartWorks playlist. 
40 ways to reconnect to your own heart and to the hearts of others. Thank you. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.